This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that, given the whole thing that happened at the Academy Awards, but eh. He, he acted in some good movies, though. I'm I'm starting to wonder right now if they if they kind of did what Clannad did, and they're like, we have five different routes, we're gonna have different people write the different routes. Because this is kind of giving me shades of Kotomi's route, where, like, I liked Clannad a lot. Kotomi's route was so much better than, like, every other route in the game. It feels like this is kind of the same way. It feels like this was almost written by a different character. A different character, different person, different writer wrote this route, because there's way less cringe in this route, and way more actual, genuine, good dialogue, and, like, uh, character development. Alright, I'm going to get going. Yumiko? <laughs> in the plot twist of the century, the Machina route actually has the best writing in the whole series. Like, I, I don't care. <laughs> Yumiko leans in, leans in close, and our lips lightly touch. Pretty plain compared to the passionate kisses we were exchanging here only a week ago. I'll come back early today, alright? Well, you I mean, maybe you're past the honeymoon phase of the relationship. Three days have passed since that commotion. Unfortunately, Yumiko still hasn't cheered up whatsoever. Lingering regret over her blunders is only a small part of it, I think. It seems more like a deep reservoir of self-doubt that's been gathering inside her for months is finally overflowing out onto the surface. Man! Can we have a girl... No, hang on. No. Be careful what you wish for, Artie. I was about to say, can we have a girl who has high self-esteem for a change? But no, actually, I prefer girls with low self-esteem over girls with high self-esteem. If you have high self-esteem, you're generally kind of full of yourself and a bit egotistical. I mean, maybe, can we have a girl who has a good balance of self-esteem? Hmm. That's the girl for me. <laughs> I told her not to worry about it, but... No matter how many times I deny it, Yumiko seems firmly attached to the conclusion that her uselessness is dragging me down. The situation's probably not going to improve until the girl realizes that that's not true. I want to convince her somehow, but... I can't seem to find the right words. Right now, all I can manage is to act like everything's normal in the hope that she'll forget all about this a little sooner. A real relationship can be one hell of a difficult balancing act. Even more than the physical fatigue, that knowledge weighs down on my shoulders. I think that's the first time it's transitioned to a new scene, like, where it gives the timestamp and everything, and the music has continued. That was... that was weird. Yeah, well, I mean, this is why I've learned you don't put people on a pedestal. That's because oftentimes, like, you can be, you can really idolize someone and then be like, oh man, they're not who I thought they were. I've had that happen before, and, you know, we're all human. We all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses and our flaws, and I think it's important to remember that. <laughs> Damn it. I just hope she's not brooding over there. Even in the middle of work, I can't get Yumiko out of my, my head. Leaving the girl alone at a time like this worries me. When I'm there, I can talk to her. It's a stopgap measure, but I can embrace her until she calms down. Solitude amplifies fear and doubt. In a frustrating situation like this, talking to yourself for hours on end is a very dangerous feign. However, I simply don't have the flexibility to spend all of my time with Yumiko right now. Our financial situation is way too tight. I've got no choice but to finish up here and get back to her as quickly as humanly possible. Phew! Logging another sandbag into place, I exhale heavily and look up into the sky. The weather's nice, so fine that it almost makes me uneasy. <laughs>
Oh, bro, how many times are we going back to this? Gotta find a payphone. Oh, thank you, laborer, my man. Right. The work progressed a little more quickly than expected. A little past two in the afternoon, I get approval to head home. Unfortunately, today's sight was pretty far from the apartment. Have to get back as quickly as possible for Yumiko's sake and mine. Yes, sir. I'm already changing out of my sweaty work clothes as my boss says goodbye. Ah, uh, can you do that at home? Oh, boy, what's wrong? You don't, <laughs> you're making me uncomfortable, man. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow's going to come. A new dividing line between the past and the future. No matter how many painful and ugly wounds you've suffered, there's always a possibility of a healing so long as you keep walking forward. That's the one thing I have to make Yumiko understand. Struggle all you want. Look for your answers. Just don't throw away your own tomorrow. I mean, there's some wisdom in that. Yumiko! What the butt's you doing? Yumiko, what are you doing? This is terrible. Surely one bad day of housework would not lead to this. This seems a little forced. You dialed the same number four times. That's not a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Michiaki is so important, his cell phone number is only four digits long. He got one of the first ones. <laughs> My cell phone number is one. She's gonna call Terrible Father. That's who she's gonna call and be like, Okay, just leave Luigi alone and I'll do whatever you want because I'm so terrible. Like, really? Oi. Oh, yay! She's not actually going to go through with it. But now he's going to be like, Trace that call. Oh, it's from this public telephone number in this random small town. Go there. <laughs> Who's prank calling me again? <laughs> Is that those stupid kids who are calling me for pizza? Not again. Uh-oh, not the epic music. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Why would you do that? Wasn't able to get back that early after all. The return train from the site was delayed, so it's already evening by the time I'm back in town. Barely any different from the usual. Driven along by sheer impatience, I find myself striding rapidly down the street. This is no good. Why am I feeling so uneasy? Probably because I kept dwelling on the situation while I worked. Unproductive thoughts keep flitting through my mind. Shaking my head to drive away those vaguely ominous feelings, I hurry home while maintaining an appropriate level of vigilance. Huh? A good feeling is usually the product of wishful thinking, but a bad feeling is grounded in experience and reality. Therefore, the latter proves accurate more often than the former. Or so they say. The lights are out in our apartment. The instant I see that, all the dark thoughts I've been fighting today spring violently back to life. Yumiko! Dropping the armful of used books I'd brought as a distraction for Yumiko, I sprint up the stairs to the second floor. Yumiko, are you there? I unlock the door and rush inside. No sound or movement answers my frantic entrance. Was I too... hmm? At first I thought she'd left the apartment, but as my eyes adjust, I find her hunched down quietly in the middle of the room, arms wrapped around her knees. The curtains are tightly shut. The sun hasn't set, but our room's enveloped in darkness. 
Unlike last time, there's no signs or of mess or physical damage. And yet, it's obvious at a glance that Yumiko is in a far, far worse shape than she was that day. What happened, Yumiko? I run over and shake her by the shoulder more roughly than I intended. As my hand moves, Yumiko's head rocks loosely back and forth like that of a broken doll. And with a terribly glacial movement of her neck, she lifts her face to look at me. Not more of the self-deprecation. Yumiko? The first thing out of her mouth wasn't my name, or even the words of apology I hate so much. They were empty, bitter words, filled with profound self-loathing. Something happened, right? All I can say for sure is that something's very wrong. Very seriously wrong. One misstep here and everything might fall apart. Yumiko, tell me what's wrong. Please. At the very least, I need her to tell me what happened. I can't do a thing until I know what we're up against. Yumiko opens her mouth slightly, closes it, then repeats the process. Finally, in a frail whisper far removed from her normally forceful voice, she speaks. A call? What, on a payphone? We destroyed Yumiko's cell phone immediately after beginning our life on the run. Yumiko slowly nods her head, then continues, audibly fighting back tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this is... I don't want to say this game is relaxing, because oftentimes I scream at the stuff that's happening, but... Yeah, amazing music, beautiful art. At the very least, yeah, you can enjoy that. And that's fine. Nobody needs to feel... For, nobody needs to chat if they don't have anything to say, because... Story-driven game. Sometimes you just want to soak it all in. Him? Your father? Ooh, I, I wonder if this is where we make the decision, like, stay in the town or run. Yumiko, you... I wrap my arms around Yumiko and interrupt her words. Crushing her against me in a powerful hug, I pet her hair and stroke the small of her back. Sorry. All I seem to do is make you worry. The girl was so desperately concerned about me that she nearly threw her own freedom away. I was naive to think that I understood. Stupid to think she would put just put it behind her. For a moment, I've immersed my into something very much like despair. How well can the likes of me possibly understand su answer such intense feelings? After gently stroking Yumiko's back one last time, I pull away, determined to at least try. We're leaving. It's better to assume they've already located us. As soon as you place that call, they had a traceable record. There aren't many people who'd bother to use a payphone these days. It's going to raise suspicions. Yeah, I'm sure you had no idea. Can't do anything about it now. Put that out of your mind. Alright then. This isn't the time for me to catalog my failings, or for Yumiko to regret her actions. After quickly gathering up a few basic personal belongings, I open the curtains a crack and peer outside. There doesn't seem to be anything suspicious going on yet. Taking my cell phone from my pocket, I open a map of the area around our apartment. All of our escape routes seem viable for the moment. We're going to catch a train at Sejima Station. Let's hurry. Yes. With a reassuring nod, I take her by the hand. Just as before, I lead our escape, pulling Yumiko along behind me. The situation's clearly worse than it was back then. But today, Yumiko's grip seems to be a little firmer. As we run along the asphalt under the setting sun, I squeeze her hand in return, searching for the resolve I'll need to keep her safe. How did they know exactly which apartment to go through? How? Yumiko had to run far away to find a payphone. Like, how would they just be like, She had the payphone in this town. I immediately know what apartment they were in. Ah, no, we're too late. Oh, no, man, he screws up again. How did they find the apartment that fast? How? <laughs> Were they just like, hey, do you guys know uh, 
Sakaki Yumiko or a cousin of Yuji? Oh yeah, everyone knows Yuji. He lives on the second floor of this apartment. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Oh, he ain't gonna like that! This guy is simultaneously very competent and extraordinarily incompetent. It's it's amusing. <laughs> you recall, I I'm such a bad father. <laughs> I can't believe that like the only villain we've encountered thus far, like who's like an actual true like overarching villain, is this guy. <laughs> Because, like, Sachi's root and Mijiru's root, like, the villain... There wasn't, like, a physical person who was the villain. It was more just the situations that they were in. And now... Uh, it's so weird. Hey, Dr. Q, welcome. Nice to see ya. Landlord must have told them about the strange laborer living there. How did they know what apartment building to go to? It would be one thing if, if they like, their apartment building had, like, the apartment payphone. But no, like, Yumiko had to run across town to find one. So, like, they could pinpoint the town, and yeah, it might be a small town, but even then, like, it would still take them a while to find out exactly where they were. I... I, I don't know. Ooh. I like the music. From the West Pseudo... From the West Tsutomo Railroad Sejima Station, we board a train on a line that winds its way through the mountains. I sit quietly next to Yumiko, my arm wrapped around her shoulder. She doesn't try to strike up a conversation, either. It's still a little early for the office workers to be coming home, so the train's mostly empty. There's no real need for us to be silent. Still, neither of us is exactly feeling like having a casual chat. I watch Yumiko's face from the side. Her expression haggard, she stares quietly down at the floor beneath her feet. There's no light in her eyes. Uh? <laughs> it's true, there's no light in her eyes! <laughs> what sort of words would this would bring this girl real comfort? I've been searching in vain for what feels like a very long time now. Too clumsy to craft skillful white lies, I couldn't even give her temporary relief. I just wanted for fiends to mellow with the passing of time. There didn't seem to be any other choice. But that was wishful thinking. Expecting the impossible. Something like this could have happened at any moment, but I just passively waited for the infinite flow of time to solve all of our problems for us. That's not how the Force works! <laughs> Pathetic as it is to admit, well, maybe I was just tired. This lifestyle took its toll on me as well. I wouldn't have chosen such an idiotic policy otherwise. I've got to tell her somehow. There's something I want Yumiko to know. Something tells me if I edited the Thomas the Tank Engine music in here, it might kill the mood of the scene. Just a tad. <laughs> just like, really serious thing, like, we're on the run. Oh man, like, Yumiko is like, suffering from crippling self-doubt. Like, what do I say to comfort her? Da 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 <laughs> Happy Thomas music. But if I just came out and said it right now, there's no way she'd accept it at face value. In fact, she'd probably interpret it as a kind but insincere lip service. Might well end up pushing her even further into her shell. Any attempt at cheering the girl up right now? Hmm. <sighs> will probably just have the opposite effect. With a loud thunk and a squeal from the brakes, our train shakes heavily and comes to a halt. Oh no. Did Michiaki send the Dementor to go with Rue? Oh yes, thank you, Mr. Conductor. <laughs> a board sounding conductor informs us that we've arrived at a station. The Nishiwaka Mountain Line, as the name might suggest, leads up into the mountains themselves. It heads even further into the backwoods than our current destination. As I glance out from our mostly empty carriage, a sign on the station platform catches my eye. Halfway up the mountain line, the West Sutomo, Sutomo Railway built a, built a baseball stadium as something of a tourist attraction. The sign's covered with a large poster advertising the team's upcoming schedule. Hmm. But my gaze comes to a halt just below it. Underneath that flashy logo, with the name of their baseball field spelled out in English, there's another sign I hadn't noticed at first. It brings back a memory from a few months ago. Something we talked about before the strain began to wear us down. 
Something important that I'd very nearly forgotten. We didn't go to Legoland, like we promised her. I don't know when I'm going to stream then. I'll have to figure it out when, I get, when that time happens. Oh, that's right. We've been hard-pressed just to get by. Maybe it's only natural that this slipped out of my mind. But it's something Yumiko needs. Something she's needed for a long time. Yumiko, you awake? Pulling Yumiko's head toward my shoulder, I lightly shake her body. Are we taking her to Legoland now? Time to transfer. Yeah. Gotta hurry or the train's going to leave. We step out onto the platform, then make our way toward the largely deserted branch line. The wind, still a little cold despite the season, blows vigorously through the exposed station. <laughs> Forgot something. We're going to go take care of that. No, that's not it. I glance back at Yumiko. Just as before, her expression's full of profound fatigue and sorrow. Forcing my dull face into the most reassuring smile I can manage, I speak. This way, Yumiko. Oh, yeah, Nintendo Land. Like, if I, if I ever find myself in Japan, you better believe I'm going to Nintendo Land. Pulling her along by the hand, I stride toward the mountain line platform. The wind gusts against our back as if to push us along. Yeah! Lego Land! Lego Land! <laughs> well? We gotta run from your dad! Oh, hey, Lego Land! <laughs> What's up? The train took us three stops into the mountains before reaching its final stop. As soon as we disembark, Yumiko's expression transforms into one of pure bewilderment. With one step past the ticket gate, a sea of vivid electric decorations opens up thematically before our eyes. It's an amusement park, if you hadn't figured that out for yourself. It's the polar opposite of the colorless, fugitive life we've been trapped in for so long. Must feel like I've carried her into a dream. It'd be stranger if she wasn't taken aback. That's exactly it. Our pursuers will never suspect the two of us might be playing around here like we don't have a care in the world. <laughs> it's nondescript amusement park. I love it. Bringing my mouth close to Yumiko's ear, I speak in an artificially stern tone of voice. Listen, Yumiko, this is a crucial part of our escape strategy. Forget the questions for now. I need you to act like you're having fun. So, so yeah. It might well invite suspicion unless we're sincerely enjoying ourselves. Make it look convincing, alright? This is so dorky, but I love it. I love it. As Yumiko nods a little dubiously, I slap her gently on the shoulder and shift to a louder, cheerful voice. Have to starve the roller coaster, am I right? <laughs> Powerful enemy, she says. I don't think amusement park rides really have power levels, but apparently Yumiko's worked out a firm internal ranking. The roller coaster is going to be one of the more intense rides. <laughs> Nah, we're starting with Millennium Force. <laughs> it's all good. If we start off with a real thrill, everything after will seem easier by comparison, right? No buts. Come on, let's go. Besides, it's already nighttime. They're probably going to close soon. Firmly seizing Yumiko's hand, I drag her over to the roller coaster line by force. In a mostly empty amusement park, soon to be closed for the night, the sound of our rapid footsteps echo through the air. If we don't get a CG here, I will be disappointed. Maybe we should at least catch our breath first. Understandably enough, Yumiko had been hesitant at first, but after two or three rides, that faded away completely. By now, she's the one pulling me around. How about the Tunnel of Love? Oh wait, they closed that. Me? I'd like to ride that bench in the rest area for a while. <laughs> Yes. People have often told me my listening skills need work, but it seems I'm not the only one. She's so adorable. Uh, hey, don't yank me around like that. Smiling wryly, I let Yumiko pull me back into a run. 
I'm just imagining that Yumiko's dad and like his goons are like, where the heck are they? Search every available town. Search like the mountains. Search the woods. Search all this. And that's just like they're in like a land having fun. They're like, they wouldn't be there. Everyone would see. Them. <laughs> Sometimes the dumbest move is the smartest. Got to keep one jump ahead of the bread line. Are you any good at driving go karts, Yuji? That's her saying that, not me. Never been in one before, but, well, I imagine it won't be a problem. I've driven real cars before. I've driven the bimbo mobile. Not quite the same thing, but I've got experience driving up to two f up to 300 kilometers per hour. But it's probably best to keep that thought to myself. No point in reminding the girl of my past. In any case, oh yeah, that's right! And we, we literally drove uh, Takashi's uh, party car. How could I forget that? That was the best part. In any case, handling this sort of vehicle is actually something of a specialty of mine. You want to have a go? <laughs> Little late to worry about that now, after the way you flipped out on that frill ride. Ow! Yumiko pokes me sharply in the flank. <laughs> this coming from the girl who cackled with glee as the coaster went into a nearly straight vertical drop? Oh, I cannot go on that. Well, whatever, let's give it a shot. I'm looking forward to seeing you drive. Oh, yes. Seriously? <laughs> hey, hey, come on over, it's crazy taxi! This inspires a moment of relief. But soon I recall the distressing example of a certain monstrous speed demon named Suo Amane. Indeed, there's no telling how taking hold of the steering wheel will change a person. A vision of Yumiko merrily smashing around the truck, shrieking, Ha <laughs> This feels so good! I want more, Yuji! Flashes before my eyes. I think I'll have to keep a very careful eye on how things develop out there. Ah, uh, it's nothing. I was just reflecting on the countless possibilities lying dormant inside the human soul. We haven't been on the Tunnel of Love Indubitably yet. Well, yeah, since we went from one end of the park to the other, riding literally everything we saw. <laughs> oh no, did you drag me on the teacups? <laughs> Yumiko looks over at me with a smirk on her face. So sue me, I'm just not a fan of that coffee cup thing. She did! Son of a gun did! <laughs> Spare me the practical applications, please. It's good that Yumiko seems to be enjoying herself, but the last thing I need is the girl developing some weird little superiority complex. I think some retaliation may be in order. Yumiko, how about this next? The instant Yumiko peers down at the pamphlet in my hands, her face stiffens like water freezing to ice. What's wrong? Where's that energy and enthusiasm gone all of a sudden, Sakaki Yumiko? He's, so he's totally pointing to the Tunnel of Love. He totally is. Teacups are your favorite ride? That's fair. I personally can't go on them, really. <laughs> they make me barf. Yumiko looks up at me with pleading eyes. Meeting her gaze with a deliberately kind expression, I answer flatly and decisively. Not happening. It's your punishment for mocking me about that spinning ride. Only fair that we have to face up to your weakness as well, right? I make my way to a building tucked into the dense forest on the edge of the amusement park, forcibly pulling a resisting Yumiko along behind me. A building marked Spine-Chilling Hall of Horrors. Oh, not the Tunnel of Love. Okay. <laughs> We're going on the Five Nights at Freddy's attraction. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion is spooky, but also campy, which is why I like it. It's the perfect mix of both. <sighs> the Lazy River at Water Parks? That's kind of a ride. That can count. Well, well, I wasn't expecting much more, much from a mere amusement park attraction, but that was a truly engrossing experience. No, the Haunted Mansion is a Disney attraction. 
that movie came afterwards. It's like saying that the Pirates of the Caribbean was a Disney movie and only a Disney movie. No, it's an attraction. That wax figure that popped out halfway through was particularly well made. The way his brains burst out all over the place was quite realistic, don't you think? I would know. I've seen people have their brains exploded all over the place. More than once. Did I ever tell you I was in the Vietnam War? Oh, and the Master of the Hall. I saw that decapitation coming, but I wasn't expecting his severed bloody head to come flying in our direction. Guess it's worth giving that sort of a place a try every once in a while, eh? Yumiko? What's wrong? You haven't been saying much. And that pale face of yours is getting whiter. Did you catch cold or something? You did seem even more frightened than I'd expected. Yumiko only shrieked and screamed like a normal girl for the first five minutes or so. After that, the terror must have overloaded her brain. No matter what came after us, she'd just quiver violently at my side, her face frozen in an expressionless mask. You really are totally helpless against that sort of stuff, huh? My bad. Can't deny that. I did not need to know that. That's also not okay. Hmm? You say something? Her pallid face abruptly blooming red, Yumiko pulls me firmly alone by the hand in a clear attempt at changing the subject. Uh, have we eaten the footlong churro yet? Because we ain't leaving until we're sharing a footlong churro. Yeah, same here. We finished visiting nearly all the attractions the theme park has to offer. Yumiko glows with obvious satisfaction, but there's a hint of fatigue in her eyes as well. Of course, considering the lull and stormy day we've just had, I suppose it's only natural for her to be a little worn out. Why don't we finish up by riding the Ferris wheel, or... Uh, Yumiko? As I'm suggesting, we conclude our visit with that venerable amusement park staple, I notice that Yumiko's looking off in a completely different direction. Is there someone behind me? No, it doesn't seem like it. She's been shooting glances over at one fixed point in particular. Subtly, careful not to let Yumiko notice, I follow the line of her gaze. Wait, does Yumiko seriously want to? What I find there surprises me. It's an attraction somewhat out of sync with Yumiko's image. Is it the Tunnel of Love? Of course, an amusement park isn't the sort of place you'd expect to find Yumiko to begin with, but even in that context, this ride stands out as an S-rank mismatch. Hey, Yumiko. Do you, uh, want to ride that thing? I point in the direction Yumiko was just looking and gingerly ask the obvious question. Instantly, in a reply of the previous conversation, a replay of the previous conversation, her pale face lights up with a violent blush. Merry-go-round? Well, you've been running around like a little girl the whole time we've been here, haven't you? Rude. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. In that case, you want to just skip it and leave? Guess that's decided then. You're so easy to understand. Getting up off the bench, I take Yumiko by the hand and pull her to her feet. Let's make that the grand finale then. It's the merry-go-round! Now we do get a CG. Yuji is looking a little weird in this one. But that's adorable. You got all, all the horses! <laughs> Yumiko's like, Ah, this is a scary ride! It's like, Yumiko, we went on the freaking roller coaster of terror. This is nothing. Also, wow! The blurring of the background light. How fast is this merry-go-round going? This is like a roller coaster tycoon merry-go-round when it's suffering from the breakdown that causes it to spin around really fast. Before long, the two of us have climbed onto the ride Yumiko had her eye on. The park's shutting down for the night very soon. There aren't any other visitors to be seen. Well, I do generally make the CGs the thumbnails. But nonetheless, the girl looks around the area nervously, self-conscious despite the complete lack of spectators. What's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Nobody's around. Might as well throw your pride to the wind and regress to childhood. Ignoring Yumiko's protests, the merry-go-round creaks to life and begins to spin. 
This is this looks like something I would expect to see in the Michiru route. Especially since apparently Michiru's default hair color is black and not blonde. I feel like if, if Michiru had her normal hair color, like this could be a CG in her route. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the CG's bobbing up and down. That's 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 great attention to detail. The merry-go-round creaks to life and begins to spin. A vast array of cheap-looking electric decorations and lights begin to blink cheerily on and off, when an upbeat tune that seems vaguely familiar playing from the speakers overhead. <laughs> Halfway through the sentence, Yumiko falters. The carousel horse slowly rises and falls underneath us. The scene before our eyes transforms again and again. A brilliant green gradient fa fades into a sky of impossible indigo blue, forming an artificial stage in the midst of the darkness. White lights above merge into one continuous line, illuminating the spectacle. As the soothing, strangely nostalgic sounds and lights wash over us, the tone of Yumiko's voice gradually begins to change. What's wrong? I can hear the girl faintly breathe in. And then, in a voice just barely audible over the gar garish music, she continues. Oh, That's cute. I like that. <laughs> I haven't. Aww! Okay, that's adorable. That's really cute. I like that. Every time we move up and down, the metal fixture supports our horse, supporting our horse creak audibly. With every clunking repetition, Yumiko's body shakes a little in my arms. And it's not just because the horse is worn out. Yumiko shared her memories of those early days with me before. How at first she grew up assuming that to be a normal child. How she slowly came to realize she was different. The beginning of her isolation. This is definitely one of my favorite moments from Grisea thus far. For sure. Oh, that's not nice. The quivering of her body grows noticeably stronger against my hands. Yumiko's sentence shudders to a halt. Her shoulders have heave with silent sobs. The girl's been making an effort not to cry in front of me. Even when she was crushed by her own failures, she did her absolute best not to break down. Even now, she keeps her back turned, refusing to let me see the tears. How many times has Yumiko cried like this, her face hidden from the world? Abandoned. Rejected. Betrayed. Hacking at her hair with a box cutter. Hiding in her room. At all the times it hurt the most, the girl's been on her own. Aww. This is so cute. It's in stark contrast to most of the rest of the game. Yumiko. Artificial stars rotate before our eyes. The light merges together into one long, multicolored stripe, dancing up, then down, then left, then right. <laughs> the ride operators are like, the carousel ride was supposed to end after a minute, but they're having a very serious heart-to-heart, -heart. just keep it going. <laughs> Red and white and yellow and blue extend all around us, spinning in time to the cheerful, simple music. Busted. If I wanted to really kill the mood of this scene, I would play the Roller Coaster Tycoon merry go round music over this. 
I never tell lies. Don't you know that by now? No, he's, he's still kind of a butt. But he's a reliable butt. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, though. Ridiculous slander. <laughs> Yumiko hesitates, choosing her next words carefully. Yeah, if they had actual merry-go-round music going on in the background, that would definitely kill the mood of the scene. I know what's coming next. It's nothing I want to hear. A phrase we've tried to make taboo. It must have been on the tip of her tongue so many times these last two months. The miserable apology that finally spills out of Yumiko's mouth is a quiet, frail thing, but it's still enough to pierce me to the core. Yumiko. Calling her by name, I stroke her cheek with one hand. As if her own pain wasn't enough, she wants to take on the darkness inside me. She's trying to load down her slender body with a weight it can't possibly bear. And this from a girl too weak to even support herself. I have something I wanted to say to you as well, Yumiko. I draw the arm I've wrapped around Yumiko closer to me. Pressing her body firmly to mine, I speak the words clearly into her ear. I'm really glad you were born. Thank you. Okay, that line, that is really sweet. I like, I love that a lot. I love that a lot. Right after she was talking about how she's like, nobody wanted me to be born. That's, that's beautiful, Yuji. I've never had anyone care about me this much. Everything I did before I met you felt hollow. I always ended up alone. With my master gone, I didn't know why I was even bothering to keep on breathing. Continuing to work for my country, I tried to find the meaning of the words she left me at the end. They were all I had left. I still haven't unraveled that mystery. But now that I'm with Yumiko, I think I'm beginning to glimpse some small fragment of the answer. At the very least, your birth had meaning for me. So let me say this one more time. Don't apologize. I'm grateful to you. I embrace her even more strongly than before. I I would definitely that's probably that was probably the best line in the whole game. Yes, it was it was a very powerful and very good line. <laughs> also, this is easy this is easily one of the best scenes in the whole game. I'd still put the number one scene possibly the scene where uh Makina's trying to teach Michiru English, which was hysterically funny. But as far as like just wholesome emotional moments, this one probably takes the cake. It's adorable. Above the swaying carousel horse, Yumiko's body begins to tremble once again. A warm drop of water falls on the hand I've wrapped around her, then another. Pretending not to notice, I gently stroke her hair. I'm not kind, just full of myself. I do what I want. <laughs> I don't even care if this episode is an hour alone on the YouTube VOD. It's worth it. Her hand reaches back to grasp the sleeve of my shirt. <laughs> He's kind in this route. Not in the Michiru route. <laughs> Sorry, it's my nature. It takes some time for Yumiko's trembling to die down. The park outside is already sinking into darkness. As I watch, the lights on the other attractions wink out in ones and twos. <laughs> the ride operators are just like, Ah, oh, let him keep going. They're adorable. <laughs> By the way, there was one other reason I brought you here. <laughs> yeah, barf bags were provided! <laughs> Sounds like she's forgotten. 
because I promised. Well, and they offered me free barf bags, so how can I pass that up? As my words jog her memory, Yumiko's voice takes on a note of surprise. You told me you wanted to visit one of these, remember? I know the timing's a little crazy, but... Tears welling up in the corner of her eyes, she looks back at me and smiles. <laughs> well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> Come on, there's no way I'd forget something like that, but you did! The music playing from the tin tinny, poorly maintained speakers above us repeatedly interrupted in by bursts of static. <laughs> That's what. The, if they had that music here, it would have totally killed the mood. That jarring noise periodically cuts our conversation apart. The cheap dream world creaks and groans all around us. It's not exactly the sort of illusion you can just lose yourself in. But none of that really matters. I found a woman who, who can love a piece of trash like me from the bottom of her heart. That's enough to make this place an impossible paradise. Eventually, the last attractions go dark and our little fantasy world fades away with a sigh of a motor. If there's one thing I know about amusement parks, you don't want to be in one after it closes. They're really creepy. <laughs> I sat on our horse with my... Oh. The merry-go-round horse. I'm like, we bought a horse? I sat on our horse with my arms around Yumiko, quietly speaking her name again and again, as if to remind her that she's here, that this is real. And in response, she whispers, Yuji, many, many times.